Hi everyone, Comic Reviewer here, and this time reviewing on The Lion King. Now, as you know, The Lion King is a 1994 animated Disney film, and is meant to be one of the biggest cultural impacts on Disney film history. Now, the premise of the movie is mainly about Simba, mainly, who mainly lives his day-to-day -day life in the Pride Lands, until something bad happens to his father, who is voiced by James L. Jones, known for voicing Darth Vader in Star Wars, as well as the Emperor of the Night, voice, who voiced in Pinocchio, Emperor of the Night, and quickly flees the Pride Lands, which leaves Scar to pretty much use, manipulate, and control the hyenas, as well as the lionesses to get what he wants, as well as turning Pride Land into a barren wasteland. And leaving Simba to pretty much make friends with Timon and Pumbaa, who become his friends and companions, as well as leading him to a newer lifestyle, until he meets Nala, who helps him to regain his confidence to try and take back Pride Land. Now, with The Lion King is that, yeah, the movie is mainly about coming to terms with the past and fighting your demons. And I do feel, yeah, with Simba, is that he starts to pretty much come to terms with his past, as well as coming to terms with his responsibilities about being, about being the King of Pride Lock. Now, at the same time, yeah, Nala tries to help Simba become the king he's supposed to be, as well as becoming his potential love interest. Well, Rafiki, who is meant to be the baboon as well as shaman of the Pride Lands, is meant to help Simba become the person he's meant to be, as well as adopting a more crazy persona to help Simba come to terms with his past. Well, Timon and Pumbaa are meant to help Simba move on from the past and pretty much carry on carry on as life never happened. But as well as that, as soon as they see what Simba's title is, they start to see Simba as a king, but as well as still their friend. With Scar is that he's quickly t turned Pride Land into a barren wasteland and sees no guilt and remorse for his actions. Despite the fury, despite the fan theories about the Kings of Pride Land throughout the Pride Lands, it's clear that due to Scar's overhunting, as well as manipulation, greed, and compulsive lying, had pretty much caused the environmental changes to happen, as well as showing Scar has no concern or care for what's happening, and just continues as life happens. And the point of Zazu is also to help Simba become the king he's supposed to be, as well as as helping, as well as being there for, for the for the royal family. So I think somewhere, yeah, The Lion King isn't a bad film. I feel like, yeah, with the hyenas, that they're quickly used and manipulated, and the point of Shanzi, Banzi, and Ed is that they quickly see that Scar is just using them to get what he wants. And, yeah, I do feel with Zazu is that he's just quickly never used as much, and is quickly thrown on the sidelines. And the point of Simba is that he's meant to be like us, coming to terms with our past, as well as our responsibilities as a person. And I feel like when you have Simba as a kid with his dad, it hits close to home, because when Mufasa does talk with Simba about his disappointment, as well as being relieved that he's okay, it's kind of like when you're a kid, if you're in trouble at school, or if, you got in, or if you're in a sticky situation, your parents will still be there and still be supportive. And what's interesting is that, yeah, originally in Lion King, the hyena species club dogs were originally going to be used, but instead were used as hyenas instead. 
And what's actually interesting is that, yeah, with Michael Ironside, who, I mean, Jeremy Irons, who voices Scar, is that he does give this more evil, manipulative, manipulative character persona. I feel with Tim Curry or Malcolm McDowell, they would never have done the character justice, as they would have been the stereotypical villains. I feel with Jeremy Irons is that he feels a bit more like he should be in The Lion King. He's meant to be like the standard non-British villain, but sounds mostly like what he should be. I do feel in the valley where Timon and Pumba live, there could have been more animals to explore with and Simba to make new friends. What's actually interesting is that in The Lion King as well, Mufasa wasn't supposed to appear again as a spiritual guide. Again, he was supposed to stay dead and be dead, but the Disney writers and team for bringing Mufasa back was meant to help Simba become a better person and what he was meant to be. And I do feel, yeah, there were moments where I do question things, like how Simba doesn't question how the hyenas one af were after him again, even after what happened to Mufasa, and you question why the why the other lionesses don't, you know, question about Scar's lying or manipulation. With the live action Lion King one, you do see them slowly seeing the dangers of what Scar's doing, as well as coming to see Scar as the manipulative person he's meant to be. And what's actually interesting is that with the hyenas, Sanji, Banshee, and Ed, they're supposed to be basically Scar's underdogs. And what's interesting is that Ed, in the live action one, was changed to a different hyena who was meant to be more, more different from what the animated one was supposed to be. So I think with the animated one, it does a bit more. It's able to give what you want, but not too much. And I feel with the live action one, it's able to explain things a bit more. So I think somewhere, yeah, with Lion King, they did spawn a sequel, Lion King's 2 Simba Pride, as well as a prequel, Lion King 3, as well as a Timon and Pumbaa TV series, as well as a TV series in between called The Lion God. So I think somewhere, Lion King definitely left an impact but I think it definitely left its mark well. So in the circle of life, it deserves a thumbs up. Still good and still alright. So Comic Reviewer here, signing out.